Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Very glad to be with you today. Thanks for coming. There are these two great stories from the Bible today that I want to kind of retell for you because they're so interesting. And I think you're going to really like them if you don't already. The first one, you had, probably had a hard time getting a hold of because you couldn't read the whole story. We had to cut the story of Jonah down a little bit to get it into a small enough reading. <laughs> but it is the funniest story, one of the funniest in the whole Bible. Just to recap for you just for a minute, there was a prophet named Jonah. Jonah was told to go and tell the people of Nineveh by God, go tell the people, uh, people of Nineveh to repent and change their ways or something bad's going to happen to them. Jonah says, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go to Nineveh because I, I don't like the people of Nineveh. And if I tell them to repent, and they do, then you won't make a bad thing happen to them. <laughs> so God convinces Jonah through a, a fish and a big fish and through a long story, he says, so Jonah finally goes to Nineveh and he says, you guys, you have to change your ways or else God's going to bring calamity on your town. And they say, really? Well, we repent, of course. We're changing our ways. We want to get right. We want to do what's right. Thank you so much, Jonah, for bringing this message to us. We didn't know. And now we're going to change our ways. And God changes his mind and says, okay, I'm not going to bring anything bad on Nineveh. Jonah goes, I knew it. I knew it. You see, just the worst thing happened. I came, I preached, they repented, and now the people I hate are not going to have something bad happen to them. He says, I, I just want to die. And God says, really? <laughs> you want to die because I'm so compassionate? Okay. That's what you want. And so then, Jonah has a really bad ending happen to him. The Bible makes Jonah look really foolish. He says, well, I want to die because God's so nice to Nineveh and I knew he would be and now I'm just so upset. I wish God would take my life. So he goes up on top of a hill and he sulks for a while and he pouts and he, he sits over top of the hill, looks at the city of Nineveh and a plant grows up overnight, a fast growing bush and gives him shade and he's so happy about the bush and then a little worm comes along and cuts the vine and the vine dies and, and he says the same thing about the bush dying as he did about Nineveh. He says, well, I'm just so upset about the bush dying, I want to die again. And God says, look, dude, the bush came up overnight, you had nothing to do with it, and it's gone. It's a bush, and you're waiting to die. That makes about as much sense as you wanting to die over me being so compassionate to Nineveh. So Jonah looks like kind of a, a temper tantrum little child who's mad at God because God is so gracious. And he's ready to die over Nineveh just like he's ready to die over a bush die. Well, there's another, another people, uh, another story today. A guy's also mad. The people are mad because God is so generous to the people who come last for work. This is the story of the landowner who goes out and hires people for the vineyard. Something he probably does every day, when at least at harvest time. Go out during the harvest time, we need a lot of harvesters, go get the free, free labor or the people who are not, not working and hire them. And the people at 6 o'clock in the morning get hired, they work all day long, but the landowner keeps hiring people all day long. Some people only work one hour. 5 o'clock from 5 to 6. Sun goes down, landowner comes up to pay the people what they, what they, uh, what he's going to give them for the work. The people who came for one hour get the same wage as the people who worked all day long. And the people who worked all day long are really mad. They said, "You are so generous." I said, "Yeah, I'm generous. What's it to you? I gave you what you thought you were going to get, and we're 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 good, right?" Yeah, but you're still way too generous. We don't really like that. So 
the really fun news and pretty powerful news, but you can take with you today. God is way more generous than you might think. Way more generous. More giving, more forgiving, more pleased to give, give and give than you would expect. He forgives the people of Nineveh. He gives the, the people who came to work just one hour, gives them a whole day's wage. Let me tell you three little stories that are closer to home than the Bible stories. Although, a lot of you guys read the Bible a lot. So you've probably heard those stories before. But, I'll tell you a story about uh, dogs, and I'll tell you a story about children, a story about wives or spouses. Suppose um, you're, you're married, and um, you're coming up on your first anniversary, your first wedding anniversary, and the guy says to the girl, honey, I got you these eight flowers because you were nice to me about eight times this past year. And I wanted to give you what you deserve. You were nice to me eight times. I gave you these eight beautiful flowers. I love you so much. I love you so much because I'm just going to give you what you gave to me. That would be fair. Fair is fair. The wife goes, I thought you loved me. No, I don't. Well, I sort of love you, but I want to be fair. God would say, anybody else would say, I love you. I would give you all the flowers in the world if I could, but I only have these 75 to give you. I, I bought out the store. Take all 75. I wish I could give you all the a whole world. That would be love, right? I love you. I want to give you everything. Not eight flowers for eight favors. Now, so you have children. Uh, maybe younger children. Maybe you, uh, you've gotten to that age where you're tired of giving them uh, requests all the time. So you say, look, let's give the, give the kids an allowance. It'll teach them how to handle their money, how to save it, what to spend it on. They make choices instead of having to ask you for every little thing. Can I have this? Can I have that? And you can now say, well, what do you have in your allowance? Go spend your allowance on that thing. But most of you who are parents realize that at least at first, the kid will spend the allowance in about the first day and a half. And it comes to the end of the week and they say, oh, I'm out of money, but I really, really, really want this thing in the store. You're like you're in the store, think of candy or a t-shirt or something at the mall. And so how much money do you have in your allowance? Well, the shirt costs $18, but I've only got 15 Now some of you will say, well, you just should have spent your allowance. A lot of you will say, okay, here's $3. You can buy the shirt. Oh, we'll buy the other one too. It's on sale. <laughs> I'll cover it for you. So that's what parents do. The parents who love their kids, a lot of times, although they want to teach them discipline, they want to teach them how to follow the rules, handle the money, a lot of times they'll give in and say, I love you. Here's the extra couple of bucks. And I'll throw in some more on the side. Because you, well, because you're my kid. Now don't spend your money too fast next week. Because they love them. Love does not give what is deserved. Love gives generously. I see I'm neither married nor do I have kids. So I've got to resort to these animal illustrations. <laughs> so... My dogs get fed every day. They get fed dry meal, which is supposed to be this good stuff, but it's dry food in a little bowl. Butch gets one and a half, and Snapper, who's older, and gets just one scoop because she doesn't run around so much and want to get fat. So they get fed every day, in the morning and in the evening. At the evening time, when I'm having supper, they both will sit at the table and say, you know, that was really good meal you just gave us in the bowl. But what you have on your plate looks really good. <laughs> and every night I tell them, I just fed you, you are not hungry. Now go over there and sit down, quit begging. I mean it. 
Well, then they keep looking at you and looking at you. Then they kind of paw a little bit. Said, but we love you so much, David. I, I don't care. Go sit down. And then at the end of the meal, because I love my dogs and they're not going to get fat, I give them the last bite, whatever is on the plate. Now you sit down. You work for this. You sit. I give them a little thing off my plate. Then they get to lick the plate. So, so that's that. Because sometimes love uh, spoils, love is generous, love gives more than is needed, love gives more than is deserved. Love does not play tit for tat, you give to me, therefore I give to you. Love gives more. Just like the parable ends, are you envious because God is so generous and gives those people more money than they deserve? How can you be mad at God's generosity, God's compassion, God's mercy? It's really hard for us to kind of get this though because we live in a world where it's tit for tat. It's you do this, I do that. We make agreements. You agree to do this, I agree to do that. We don't really live in a world that's very gracious or overabundant or generous. Most of the time it's just mathematics. You, you do this, I do that. So when we hear parables like this one, we hate it. It's like, well, gosh darn it, he should have given more to the other people. Well, just be glad that God was generous to the people who, who didn't work that long. So, in case you didn't notice, the two people in the parables and the stories, you, do not, you don't want to emulate. You don't want to be Jonah. And you don't want to be the people who worked all day. Those are, those are negative examples. Because they were so mad that God was so gracious. Let's let God be gracious and generous. And the truth is, you all, nobody wants, nobody should want to get what they deserve from God. You don't want to go approach the divine, either in this life or the next life, and say, God, give me what I deserve. <laughs> Just let God be generous and say, God, I depend on your mercy in here. I'm going to fall back on your generosity. I'm going to ask you to be gracious. And don't give me what I deserve or the person next to me what they deserve. Let's just hope that you are very generous. <coughs> Let's just put our trust in God's grace and mercy. And not ask for what we deserve. The good news is, Love is never fair. Love is always more than fair. More than fair. And even though it's hard to accept sometimes, because it doesn't seem normal, whether it's in this life or the life to come after this one, we are always hoping to put our trust and our confidence in the graciousness of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God, who gives more than we could even hope or imagine, because God does what love does. God is love. God's not going to say, you did eight good things for me in your life, here have eight flowers. God's going to say, I'd give you all the flowers in the world if I could get them in the room, but I could only have this 75. Or, like the child who you always give more to than their allowance. And that's what God is like, giving more than was agreed to. And like the dogs who want a little snack off the table, they already have enough food, but God doesn't care about enough. God wants to give more, more and more. So I just wanted to leave you with those two stories, both from Jonah from the Old Testament and the landowner in the New Testament as reminders of God's grace and mercy and compassion. Nobody wants to get what they deserve. But the, one of our prayers says, from the prayer book, it says, God always kind of resists. God resists and holds back against the proud who confide in their own strength and what they deserve. In the, 
To the same extent, God never fails those who make a boast of his love. In this life, on a daily basis, or on my deathbed, or when I get to heaven, I just want to say, God, I, I trust and I have faith in your generosity. I trust and I have faith in your compassion. I trust, I have faith in your goodness. I don't want what I deserve. I just trust in your love. Because love never gives what is deserved. Love always gives more. I offer this to you in God's name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen.